Hello, Mr. Barton here, and in this video, I'm going to answer the question that nobody's been asking really, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Can I play Guess the Misconception? Of course you can play Guess the Misconception. Now, if you've been to one of my talks in the last probably two years now, the chances are I've forced you to play this game anyway. But if you haven't, you've never lived. And it's a matter of time before Anton Deck offered me some kind of seven figure sum to snap up the rights. So you best get playing whilst you still can. So the way Guess the Misconception works is I'm gonna show you a question that's been answered on my Diagnostic Questions website tens of thousands of times by students all around the world. And very simply, I'm gonna ask you to predict what you think the most common misconception is. So in other words, what's the most popular incorrect answer? Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I do this at departmental meetings. And as I've argued in the video that was about the benefits of teachers writing questions together, I think if you get teachers discussing questions, so just show them questions and do what I'm gonna do in this video, it focuses all the discussion on the pedagogy and it leads to a much richer and more positive experience than if you try and do things like joint planning and all that kind of stuff, okay? So without further ado, let's play Guess the Misconception. Oh, <laughs> I've done some top class animation for you there as well. I'm gonna show you that one more time. Nice, all right, so here's the first question. Which point is shown at two thirds? W, X, Y, Z, and there's your, there's your answer. And uh, there's your choices. Now at this stage, it's probably a good idea to pause the video and just think to yourself, what is the most popular incorrect answer? Okay, all right, are you back? Have you got your answer? Are you feeling confident? Let's reveal all. So <laughs> the first thing that should hit you like a flipping brick in the head is that this answer, this question has been answered correctly only 29% of the time by students all around the world. B gets answered 10%, 30% go for C, 32% go for D. So Z is the most popular choice for the incorrect answer. Now, if you're like me, firstly, you'd be flabbergasted by those statistics. And secondly, you'd be wondering why, why are kids going for these answers? Well, here's the beauty of diagnostic questions. If you set the questions and quizzes to your kids and the answer either on the laptop, mobile phone, tablet, whatever, when they choose A, B, C, or D, they're prompted to give an explanation. And it's these explanations that allow you to get the depth of understanding that lie behind these startling statistics. So I'm gonna show you a few of uh, those explanations from real life kids now. So 10% went for B, B's at X, so between one and two. Why are they saying between one and two? A half of three is 1.5, and I can clearly tell that X is marked at 1.5. So we can see there that students are muddling up two thirds, probably with three over two, getting it the wrong way around. What about C? Why, why on earth, or why would they go for Y, which is at point two? I think the answer is C because there are three equal parts. So if you count the three lines, it takes you to the letter Y. So what are they doing here? Well, I think they're muddling up and not realizing that fractions can be numbers as well and just thinking it as two thirds of the length of the line. And again, as this student's explanation clearly shows in a visual way, it's two thirds of the line. So a completely different misconception, but a really pertinent one. 30% of kids are going for this one. Do those students not know that fractions are numbers as well? And finally, D, the most popular one. Why on earth would you be going for Z? Well, here we go. It's between two and three, and it's closer to three, which is the denominator. So a clear lack of understanding of fractions at all here. Just thinking two thirds means between two and three. But there's some good news because when students get things wrong on diagnostic questions, they can benefit from reading correct explanations given by students all around the world. And it only takes that magic wand to make sense to that individual child and their misconception may be re uh, resolved. So here's some uh, lovely uh, popular explanations. And I'm just gonna flash these on the screen, pause them and, and have a read whenever you want. But these are just lovely ways that students have chosen to understand that particular question and, and share their explanation with the rest of the world. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Can we play one more round? Go on then, let's do it. Can we have the animation again? Go on, here it comes. Guess the misconception. Right, round two. What number is three more than minus 2.5? Again, so what I'm after here is what is the most popular incorrect answer? Feel free to pause the video. All right, have you got your answer? Are you feeling confident? Were you feeling confident last time and got it wrong? Let's see what happens this time. So again, A is the right answer. Only 37% are getting this right, followed by B, uh, then C, 
and then D again, 32% are going for 1.5. Why are they going for this? Well, let's have a read of the reasons. So why are students going for C? Why do they see minus 5.5? If you add three to two, it equals five and you put the number together, it is be minus 5.5. So three more, they're just treating it as if positive answers. They're treating it as if it was three more than 2.5, then just chucking the minus sign on there. As this student explains, more means in negative terms, going closer to minus 100 than to one. Well, it does, but have they got the understanding of three more means more positive? A very specific misconception. 2 plus 3 is 5, so 2.5 plus 3 is 5.5, and put the minus sign on. Same misconception. But what about D? Why is this the most popular, 1.5? Because you add a positive number on, so it must be bigger, correct? But 0.5 is only 2 bigger, and 1.5 is 3 bigger. What's going on here? Well, I reckon students are missing out the zero when they're counting here. A completely different misconception than um, is apparent in uh, answer C which is going to require different intervention, but they're still getting this question wrong. And again, if you count up, it's 1.5. They're going the right way, but they're missing that zero out. But again, good news. Students are getting this right, and they're coming up with some beautiful explanations to really help students. And they're all different. They're all written in ways that students can understand, and it only takes one of them to make sense. And hopefully, your student's misconception is resolved. Now, the point of this showing you this is twofold. One is to hopefully convince you that it's a really useful thing to do, as I say in departmental meetings or just between colleagues, is to look at a question, discuss it, discuss the merits of it, and decide what you think is the most uh, popular wrong answer. It really focuses the pedagogy. But secondly, it's to try and reveal that often the misconceptions we as teachers think our students have aren't necessarily the misconceptions that they have and that has major implications for how we teach and how we help our students. Anyway, hope that was useful. See you later.